I'm not the person to change somebody's opinion. If you're anyway. coming to a comedy show to get uh, to get informed. <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to feel like the whole world is against you, and you just gotta think like, what I'm stressing out about doesn't mean anything. <laughs> That's so fucking crazy, good dude, dude. That is amazing, dude. Thank this you is so much, man. Absolutely amazing, man. You crushed this. So you going uh, right in the forum? Yeah. Yeah. I want to be able to look at this thing every day. Hell yeah. I got a lot of tattoos I don't get to see unless I'm like <laughs> taking a shower or something. Yeah, I've 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 got a bunch that I just forgot I had. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then every, sometimes somebody would be like, oh, what's that one? I'm like, oh, shit. Like, oh, let's learn, relearn together. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> let's relearn together. Yeah, dude. I, I luckily was too broke at 18 to get tattoos. Mm. So I didn't start till I was 23. Okay. So luckily I don't regret any of mine. Right. Like, Man. I, I said when I was 13. I don't regret any of them. That's fantastic. Like, you know, they're not good. (laughs) I just don't regret them. They tell a story. Yeah, Yeah, you know, well, I covered up I still remember that tattoo show we did. Oh, that's right. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. uh, It's coming full circle. That's right. I won that, I I won that contest. I was supposed to get a tattoo for it. I never got a fucking tattoo. You didn't get a tattoo? That's But yeah, we did a show where it was like a, a bad tattoo show. And I remember I like took my clothes off. Yeah, we both took our shirt off. <laughs> well, we both had a lot of. That's right. So I was like, if you go, if it's a tattoo show, I'm gonna show you my yeah. tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, like, that's right. You got on stage and took it, and I was like, this son of a bitch, I was gonna take my clothes off. Because <laughs> the audience was dead. They were. So I was like, let's get them going. That somehow. was in like uh, Kings and Raleigh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it? I, and what's funny is I had two days before that, I was talking shit to my friend about how I hated how Burt Kreischer took his shirt off. Oh, really? And then, the, of course, he sees pictures of me with my yeah, shirt off. He's funny. like, oh, really? Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at this guy, hypocrite. Like, you got me. You got me. So uh, tell me about the tattoo you're getting today. Cause, uh, so when he said it just about 10 minutes ago, it was the first time I heard so it. So stoked. I, I, try to, uh, I try to stay out of that part of it. That way I can... Enjoy it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So uh, tell me uh, why you're getting the one you're getting. I'm getting uh, the Macho Man's uh, iconic phrase, nothing means nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think a lot of people, it's from the cream of the crop promo. I think a lot of people remember the cream of the crop part. But I took the nothing means nothing part from that promo. Because especially now, man, it's weird I'm doing it, taking a wrestling phrase from the 80s and trying to get philosophical about it. But uh, it's just nowadays, you know, the world is just crap. Yeah. You know, so like you get so worried about things that a few weeks go by and then you're like, that meant nothing. Right. Why was I so worried about that? So I'm trying to live by Macho Man's nothing means nothing. Hell yeah, dude. So the, does that like kind of um, like whenever there is failure and rejection and all those things, like having that mentality, is that helping constructive on the, the creative side and stuff like that? Tremendously, because you guys know how difficult this comedy thing is you know and i've been full-time now for a year and a half and congrats they thank you they you know they tell you a lot coming up how get used to rejection get used to this being difficult and it doesn't even touch the surface you know like i've heard so many no's and just not heard from people so i'm just trying to just take the shows i do and crush them and and just live life man like i I, for some reason i hit my mid-30s and started freaking out about death. So really? I was like, it's interesting that, uh, that you are taking that part of that promo out of it because everybody does remember the cream of the crop. Yeah. I had no idea that that was the, the intro to it. Yeah. Like, I, had, I just had no idea. I, well, it's also, and I know it's all storyline and everything, yeah. but like, it was a part where Macho Man, the cards were completely stacked against him. Mm-hmm. He felt like the entire WWF was trying to keep him from being champion. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes it's easy to feel like the whole world is against you. Right. And you just got to think, like, what I'm stressing out about doesn't mean anything. I mean, taking that from a wrestling promo is no different than taking a quote from a television show or a scene from a movie. Uh, all of those things, there's an analogy in there that's yeah. uh, meant... Uh, to tell a story, you know what I mean? Exactly. And it just so happens that that certain individual was incredibly good at telling stories. Exactly. You know? that, was it the commitment to the character? So, like, I, I talked to Drew a little bit about this. The character commitment he had, the... Like, so I know they had writers and things like that and all. Back then, not so much, but yeah. yeah. Not so much. They'd be like, hit these key points, but do it. Yeah, right. but I mean, like for him to, to one, for you to be able to kind of pick up on the, the fact that he was kind of being 
kind of blackballed mm -hmm. in, in the storyline yeah. itself because he had a career. He's trying to build a career. He's trying to do all these things. And for him to, like, you know, bridge that – that thought process to the audience, you know, cause like I didn't get that from it, you know, but I right. mean, I also, I really haven't watched wrestling in a long sure, time, sure. Yeah. but that was when I was a kid, you know, as a kid, I would have still never got that, yeah. you know, yeah. but like, as you grow and, and the character commitment he had, because like, dude, he was, he was, he was the character. You he's, know? One of the, he's one of the guys who, you know, they say the phrase live in the gimmick. He was one of those guys who was always living the gimmick. He was that guy. And he was bringing his uh, life into it with him. Uh, but So you say that, and you talk about freaking out about death in your mid-30s. Uh, so let's talk about that, but also... Yeah. Uh, were you pretty carefree before then, and and life just caught up to you? What was it? Was there something that came up that that really fucking put death on the table? Uh, I mean, as, as cheesy as it sounds, uh, getting married a second time mm. and actually enjoying the relationship mm -hmm. I'm in. Like now, I just <laughs> I get so like I, you know, the phrase if you don't if it wasn't for bad luck, you wouldn't have any bad luck at, yeah. or have any luck at all. Yeah, uh, I just the universe. I was like, I'm finally happy. <laughs> so please don't take this from right, me, you know, like right. that kind of thing. Like, you know, carefree in your it's 20s beautiful. just because I didn't have, well, I mean, now that I think about it, didn't have anything to live for. Right, you know nothing I mean? to like, lose. Yeah. And now you got something to lose. Yeah. Now it's I'm beautiful. like, well, I want to grow old with this person. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, God, now I'm like 30. But then I think about it, you know, I can't remember back when I was three or four. Sure. It seems so long ago. Yeah. So in another 37 years, I'll only be 74. Right. You know, so like I'm, I'm not even close to being. It's a lot of time. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying to have that mentality, you know, like day the day. things you worry about aren't worth worrying about. Mm. Cause I come from a very long line of warriors Same. <laughs> <laughs> and I see that and I feel that creeping in yeah. and I'm just like, you're not going to be that person. Mm. You're not going to be that person. So you, you consciously like turn off the worry. I try to. Like you start, you start yeah. to worry and then you're like, like no, no, no. Is that like a, a, a mindful practice? Are you, are you, uh, what was it that you did to make yourself, uh, realize like, put you back in the moment you know what I mean is there are there things that you do or yeah I'm a very rational person okay you know like even just talking to myself I can reason some things out you know I've always prided myself on being a rational like let's think this out yeah why are you worried in the first place yeah I have this phrase that I say to myself all the time like what are you really worried about mm -hmm. and I can really like break it down in my mind and just get to the root of the problem and either talk the pros out of it and you know calm myself down to where nothing means nothing, you know, like, cause you know, coming up in comedy, you do the, you put these certain shows and these certain opportunities on this pedestal. Yeah. And then you get to do them yeah. and you're like, well, that's why done. was I so worried about yeah. that? Like, that's cool. But like, it's nothing to stay up at night about. So now that you've been full time for a year and a half, it was fucking congratulations. Yeah, yeah, it's so you, dope. Thank you. Um, what's it? Is it what you thought it would be? Yeah. Yeah. Like, luckily, you know, you, you were prepared. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm 12 years in at this point. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, well, you, you it's shot. been a full time job. I've just had a part time job yeah. on, in the yeah. side. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? That I did not care about whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, 2010, you started? Uh, 20, yeah. 20, yeah, the tail end of 2011. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I did a brewery show. For all of my friends and family, and they were way more supportive than they should be. <laughs> <laughs> so you started in 2011. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we started at the same time. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were talking about it earlier because uh, one of the notes we had that Seth got is uh, Port City Top Comic 2016. We were both in the finals, dude. Yeah, dude. And I, uh, I hold that competition win on such a pedestal. Really? Just because of the competition. Uh, like, I beat out you and Brady. Yeah. And, uh, um, just all those got Piccolo. Yeah. You know, like yeah. everyone did well. Yeah, it was a great show. And, and when I he called my name, I was like, no way. I remember, I remember, uh, I think going into the competition, I was like, I think Brady's got this. And I remember a lot of people like, ah, oh, Trendy's going to smash. And I was like, it's well, a lot of pressure. Brady just won Raleigh. Like, uh, I was third place in that one a couple of days before, you know? Yeah. And, and so uh, I was like, you know, he beat me a couple of times. And, uh, but then I remember... We would run into each other every now and again. I'd see you every a few times every couple yeah. of years. 
But then I remember seeing you a few times that year. I was like, oh, he's doing it. Like, this guy's, like, really oh, doing it. There was, you, there was a, a bit of growth that hit you. Uh, I got divorced. Really? Yeah. That's that what was, it was the same year I got divorced. Okay. And so I really, like, grew as a writer, I feel like. Ah. Uh, just, like, being able to express yourself? Well, I, was, I think early on I kept it light and silly okay. and fun. And I still try to do that. Sure. But now it's, like, more relatable. Okay. Like, it was the first time I ever let, like some pain come through gotcha you know like i had this one joke where i talked about she left her fish okay and uh, i didn't know that they were a male and a female fish right. so <laughs> i wake up one day and now i got 300 fish <laughs> started, it started off as like three fish yeah and i was like you got to come get these things because like i had to sit there and watch these these baby fish get like sucked into the filter and right. like, some of them just some of them ate each other and i was just like I'm already in pain enough. Yeah, dude. Now I gotta watch these animals die every right. day. Like, come get these things. <laughs> yeah. And so I had this joke about how when the divorce finally goes through, I'm gonna be at the lake across the street from our house, just throwing the fish in one at a time. <laughs> and I didn't even think like that. Just joke just came, just streaming one day at mm -hmm. uh, Cape Fear Comedy Festival. Okay. I just did it one day, and I look over and um, Tony Castleberry, mm -hmm. when he was still a uh, just right. a reporter. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't a comic yet. Right. And he is dying laughing nice. in the front it's row. It's a good laugh together. And I'm like, dude, I'm just, I'm just saying my pain right yeah. now. You know, like I'm getting this off my chest because today sucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I really like that was the first time that I really was like, just make real stuff funny. Mm. So, yeah, I feel like I leveled up in 2016. Yeah, that's what it felt like. I, I, I just remember looking at you being like, oh, all right, like uh, going from being a dude who's just a comedian that you see around to a guy who's like, oh, like, yeah. you know what I mean? You know the difference when yeah. you see that light click with some people. And you know how it goes when you start doing well in those contests, North Carolina takes notice. Yes. You know, yeah. So that put me on everyone's radar in North Carolina. Getting more yeah. shows, people reaching out to you, getting you yeah. booked. I got to do every show I wanted to do in North Carolina. Without Carolina. having to ask. Yeah, that's that, the best part. That to me was, that was my goal uh, for the first couple of years was uh, go do every show I could. That's why you guys saw me in Wilmington, people saw me in Asheville, Charlotte, wherever the fuck it was, I was yeah. going everywhere. And I was doing that so that I could get to do all the shows without having to ask. I wanted to be asked to be on it. Hey, you know, and it's not a, it wasn't a pride, I guess it was a pride thing. It was a, I wanted people to acknowledge the fact that I was a comedian. That's, and as I think about it, that's all I ever really wanted, was I wanted comedians to look at me and be like, that's a comedian. That's my colleague. That's yeah, all I wanted. that's all I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to be able to hang out with comics, you know, and so, uh, you know. Yeah, dude. It's, Success. It, it's a good goal to achieve, because once you get in, man, it's there's no better feeling. Yeah. I like, agree. cause uh, we just had a, a loss in the uh, Wilmington comedy community. One of the comics, uh, significant other, mm. and uh, my mother-in-law was like, "Is he gonna be okay?" Right. I was like, "If the comedy community does anything, they come together when someone needs them." So yeah. sure enough, they did, and they, he's well taken care of. So good, good. Especially, especially out there, you guys always seem to have a, a good bit of family. Yeah. Every time I go out there, you guys were always pretty tight. I really enjoyed my time in Wilmington. Yeah. Um, so, and I know you did, um, but then, so when it came time to leave Wilmington, yeah. what was that decision? Because you went to Nashville, right? Yeah, I went to Nashville, and I talked to uh, Boudreaux a little bit about this. Like, I do feel like I hung on, for comedy-wise, I feel like I hung on Wilmington too much. Yeah. I, w I wish I would have left, like, two years earlier. Really? Just to get a jump start in Nashville. Yeah. Because I feel like I'd, I'm in a good place in Nashville, but I feel like I could be in a little bit better place if I would have gotten there just a little bit earlier. But I mean, if you if you do go there early, you know, uh, it seems like things are working out okay for you now and it seems yeah. like you found yourself and who you are and yeah. all of that. And if you change any of that, then maybe you aren't, right? The butterfly effect, right? Right. You know, like, so yeah. Uh, and to be honest with you, that last year in Wilmington, mm -hmm. comedy aside, mm -hmm. was probably the best year of my life. Really? Yeah, dude. I had a little bit of local celebrity about me. Yeah. It's like I could go into a place and maybe like, a hey, person would guy. know me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they never knew my name, but like, yeah. hey, you're that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Like, that's just the, the, the joys of being a local celebrity. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, but I just, I felt like I ran Wilmington for that year. Yeah. You know, and it felt great. Yeah. So, like, was that part of the delay? Something yeah. Did? Well, so it actually was an extra year by accident. Okay. We were set to leave Nashville in 2018. And uh, Hurricane Florence came through mm. and destroyed our apartment. Oh, wow. 
So it like ripped the roof off of our apartment. Wow. Like we put everything upstairs because we thought it was going to flood. Right. We didn't know our roof was going to get ripped. <laughs> right. <up. laughs> so we had to we had to sign Jeez. a new year lease at a different apartment to kind of like right. bounce back and yeah. get our stuff together. So we ended up staying that. So that extra year was by accident, and I'm so glad it was. Got I hit the ground running in Nashville. Got some places pretty quick, and then you know the world shut down. Mm. <laughs> so I got there the September. I moved to Nashville September 2019. Wow. So six months to really establish myself. People knew boom. me, and then nothing for a year. My buddy Evan Williams moved from New York to LA. He was like he's hilarious, by the way. Yeah, he's fantastic. He was in his car driving to LA in like February, 2020. You know, he gets there and then everything shuts down, and it's just a wild thing. And then that reset has to has to really get you. The good thing is, like, we all came out of it kind of on equal ground. Right. But people knew me before, so it's almost like coming out of COVID, I was a seasoned Nashville vet at that point. Yeah, you know right, I mean? yeah. I was just one of the Nashville comics. Like, that works out. It, in a weird way, it got me through the awkward new mm. comic phase. Right. You know, like, now I'm just one of them yeah. coming back from COVID. Yeah, you know, like so going it, through this experience with all the yeah. with all your, your peers. So we did some outside shows. We did some outside mics, you know, and I really – COVID was good for me because it got me uh, focused on the online stuff. Okay. Like, I really got, like, a nice camera. I yeah. got a microphone. Started thinking of, like, what shows do I want to put out there? Like, not comedy shows, but, like, YouTube shows. Right. So, like, we leaned into the drive through reviews because mm -hmm. that's all you could do yeah, is go yeah, through yeah. a drive through you know? You're a big list guy, yeah. and I am as well, so I always love when I see your list pop up yeah. online. Well, I got a bunch you. of these questions I'm going to ask you awesome, dude. Uh, in a little bit. Yeah, dude. Uh, um, so that's, well, that's what I feel like is drive through reviews wasn't necessarily successful, like sure. number-wise, but it laid that foundation of me trial and error, like, okay, well, next show I do, I'll do this better. It's a vehicle to, to try and then to improve and learn, right? Yeah, because now I got the top five show. I finally got my light set up right. I got the you know the TV yeah. uh, aid. You know, I finally learned all of those yeah, things. Man. Yeah, and th those things don't come when you're if you're busy being on the road. You're not going to pay attention and, and try to grow those other things. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you know. Uh, and also, let's make sure we clip the part where Drew says uh, COVID was good for me. <laughs> <laughs> the time off. Was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, it was good for me too. I, you know, I, I wasn't a very. I've never. I don't know if you know this, but I, mean, I was never a very healthy human being. Uh, so, 2020, I had uh, just quit drinking. The end of 2019, and I was about to go on the road, and I don't think I was going to make it. Like, I wasn't going to make it back home that yeah. year. I just knew I was, and I was, yeah. it was a horrible mess. And uh, So that break and not being on the road was like, oh, I, can, I need to slow down. I need to take care of myself. And I think, I think that reset was good for a lot of my friends, you know, uh, uh, learning things about themselves and taking care of themselves. Yeah. Whatever it was, I think it gave us an opportunity to kind of suffer, but also take care kind of Kind of reassess, yeah. get things back in order, because, like, I was going – balls to the walls for eight years you yeah know, like one goal in mind don't care how i get there but that that's what when we started that's what we either assumed or were taught or learned you know like all those rules it's like you're out there every fucking night you're sleeping in your car and da, da, da. i was that guy i was sleeping on my comment and i was it was yeah. you know it was a it was an eight year fucking like blur gone you know, you know yeah. and and because i mean i, I I would take vacation days to go on comedy trips. Yes. I didn't see my friends. Yeah. They were like, oh, well, I guess we lost And anytime anybody uh, wanted to go anywhere with you, you're like looking up mics and shit. Yeah. What well, shows how can, can I do I some go? shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You go to a different city. My wife, like, like, yeah. we oh. went on our honeymoon in, in 2019, uh, May of 2019. And that was the longest. We were there for in Dominican Republic for a week. That's the longest I'd ever gone without doing comedy. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. she could tell I was like getting Itching. the itch. She's yeah. like, I was like, she saw me look at their ball like they had like a ballroom and like chairs and a stage. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, 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 we could we could set this up. <laughs> She's like, don't even think about it. <laughs> um, you did a uh, you did an album recording, right? The um, uh, based on a Drew story. Yeah, yeah. Did you do that at Good Nights? I did it at Dead Crow. Dead Crow. The that's new right, Dead that's right. Crow. I don't know why yeah. I thought it was good. It was a tattoo uh, themed album. I got really? The, yeah, I got a. I had a fake tattoo across my stomach for the album cover. And okay. I wanted to get a tattoo machine prop, 
Yeah. But they don't sell those. Gotcha. So I ended up buying an $18 machine from Walmart. Nice. Just to have in the picture. The whole gist of it is I That's gave That's the same myself. one Boudreaux has right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it looked familiar. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's called Based on a Drew Story. And uh, the whole joke behind it is I was messing with my wife talking about uh, she hates stomach tattoos. Okay. And I talked about getting based on a Drew story across my stomach. Okay. And she got pissed. Right. Like, and this is all a true story. Like, because I, I think I was getting my uh, Rummy Cube uh, okay. wild card. And she was like, what are you going to get? And I was just messing with her. And I started telling her these, all these terrible Drew uh, puns yeah. that I was going to get. To, <laughs> thy own self, to thy own self be Drew. You know? <laughs> and the next thing I know, she's in tears. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, I got to stop. <laughs> See, I, I, uh, I think I saw you do that on stage in Raleigh. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I thought of that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that was the joke around the title of the album. But yeah, mm-hmm. no, I was very fortunate. Like quitting drinking kind of refocused you. And, no and, doubt. And helped you you know, move forward faster or, it, I mean, or tying, with a purpose, more with a purpose. Tying it back to this, you know, you're clear headed and you really, cause I don't know about you, man, but like, I'm not an angry person, but booze can make me get a little, like not angry towards people, but like in my own head, like, well, why didn't I get that show? Sure. You know, like, so, and now just clear headed, you know, I can be way more rational and be yeah. like, it's not your time yet. Mm. And I never thought I would, you know, coming up, people say uh, a lot of times you wish for a spot and you're not ready. Yeah. And you get bummed out when you don't get it. Mm-hmm. But in hindsight, it was the best thing for you. Mm-hmm. And, man, looking back, that's never rang more true. Right. Like early on, I was like, why am I not getting this? I'm like, well, you weren't ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, so, yeah, I just I really feel like and it's kind of funny, man, to kind of tie it back into uh, wrestling and mm-hmm. everything. Like the old generation – partied it up and now these new guys are you know most of them are vegan yeah you know like most of them are you know straight edge it's athletes you know? in general right yeah uh you know it's like uh the conversation i always love is like the undefeated dolphins from the 70s yeah. uh everybody's always the greatest team of all time i was like every high school team would beat the shit out of them now <laughs> oh yeah dude <laughs> you know what I mean? it's like I, you, you can celebrate that you're undefeated i think that's fantastic but you're a bunch of guys smoking cigarettes eating greenies you know what i mean and now these yeah. guys Green. have swedish cup therapy every day you know yeah, what I'm saying LeBron like, spends a million on his body every day you know or every uh, year yeah and I mean you know you think about that with uh, just regular everyday human beings we had a conversation yesterday about uh, mental health and all this stuff while we're in here getting tattooed and I was like our grandfathers never had that conversation you know what I'm saying and now the you fact couldn't that say, you couldn't talk about it. the fact that we just said the word is so much different than it was yeah, 20, sure. 30, 40 years ago. For sure, man. Like it's it's, it's tough. You know, I feel like I lost too many. We, we have this thing in our high school, man, where we've lost so many people, mm. like from drug overdoses, suicide, just common accidents, you know, mm-hmm. car accidents, things like that. We've lost so many people and i just feel like it's way like i know every high school loses some people but we've lost 30 40 people you know from just kids i went to school with yeah and uh we lost another one this week and uh, it was mental health and i just i feel like we still grew up in that time like we're getting better about it but we still grew up in that time where they're like be a man shut up you tough know? through tough it out and, and i feel like that's where a lot of my just drinking and push it down came from yeah. you know what i mean like if i'm upset about this well let me just yeah don't talk about it it's yeah. just gonna make it worse yeah so, so whenever you you're kind of starting to get into that mental space where did where do you go to kind of deal and and you know do you seek help do you you know surround yourself with friends family you know get on stage how, how do you deal I with definitely it get on stage you know i'm a firm believer in a tight a great five minute set at a good club can cure it all you know what i mean like i know that's still a band-aid on it yeah, yeah, yeah but my wife's really good about she knows if i'm not being myself or if something's bothering me yeah. and she'll mess with me until i get like say something to her she's like yeah i'm gonna keep asking you about this yeah. until you talk to me about it uh, so she's been great for my mental health, man. She's really kind of, I don't even really have that default anymore. I don't have that default of just push it down, don't worry about it. I really have that like, well, let's go ahead and deal with it now. What can yeah. I do to make this better? You know, yeah. like, I'm just, you know, just this trying to be healthy, worry. you know? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> just trying to not, you know, I've, I've got to stop and think like, and <laughs> y'all are going to think that I got like electroshock therapy or something, but like. <laughs> Just gotta be happy. 
You know, like I'm just focused on happiness right now. You know, like love to hear that because the world could end tomorrow. <laughs> we got too many people that know too many things about some launch codes. You know, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. could be toast tomorrow, mm. uh, especially with just the the nature of the the world. So, mm. just trying to enjoy what I got. Be around people I want to be around. I'm not focused on just doing a show for the sake of doing a show. Yeah, like yeah. I want it to be good for my career. Or I want it to at least be fun be something I want to do you know I'm not because I feel like a lot of those shows early on are detrimental to your mental health the sh the shitty shows the bad shows the shows that are going to hurt your feelings are for the young kids no they are not <laughs> doubt you guys go do those because you need them I did them I did yeah, my tour I did my dues you know what I mean yeah. and uh so now I I, I just want to go to places that I don't want to walk into a pool hall where they didn't even know comedy was happening anymore that's not my bag Gone are the days of surprise comedy for you me. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. Did it too many times. Yeah. We ran that weekly open mic, and yeah. I still feel like every single week, <laughs> someone at the bar was like, ah. Yeah. I just came to drink and watch the game, yeah. And now this guy's talking about his dick. Yeah. But like, you didn't see the signs everywhere? It says open <laughs> yeah. mic every Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like we caught someone off guard every single time. Mm. So well, whenever you encounter those shows that, because, I mean, it, it still has to happen to where you encounter a show and you're like, fuck, man, that was a waste of time. Yeah. Like, is that just a, a lesson learned or? A buddy of mine, Dusty, Dusty Slay, uh, made a very good point. He's like, if it's going to be a weird show, at least work on some new stuff, you know? Yeah. So I got that switch now That's where nice. I can see a show not going that well mm -hmm. and be like, well, let me get some reps in real quick. Take it for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, at least let me say this idea out loud for for once, you yeah, know. Like, yeah, yeah. so I, I'm so able you just to, make it even more weird. Yeah, <laughs> if, it's, if it's gonna be weird, you might as well get something. Out of it. Yeah, yeah. But the thing about it is, you also got to be mindful that it, that new joke, even if it's an okay, a good joke, and it's already a weird room, like don't base that joke. Yeah, off. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, however, that joke does isn't how that joke. Take works. it with a grain of salt. Yes, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But the best thing is when you have that switch and you go to your new stuff, and that's what gets them. Mm -hmm. That's when you're like, oh, yeah, I got, some, I got some gold on my hands. Giving back to your your scene for me, it's uh, there's only so much you can tell a new comic and and young comics. Really, what has to happen is you have to go through things. If you don't quit, you will become that thing. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. so my advice always has been, uh, do it for a year, show up for a year. If you show up for a year and that's the only thing you do, then you will start learning, and then that second year you'll start becoming a comic. It's so many. I've saw. I've seen so many funny people show up and then go away because it's difficult. Keep coming for a year, but yeah. there are things you're only going to learn from doing it for 10, 11, 12 years, and there are so many things that you and I are going to learn in these next eight years yeah. that we have no idea right? about. You know what I mean? Because they say twenty is a whole nother level. Yeah. You know? well. But, and that's what I don't get about some of the newer comics that I've been seeing. Like, Nashville is great about it. Mm -hmm. Zany's is awesome and lets you come watch the shows during the week. And, you know, mm -hmm. and then if, a sh I mean, they always sell out the shows on the weekends. So there's no, re there's really no place for you to sit yeah, or yeah. else they'd tell you to come to those too. Sure. Uh, but, I mean, every now and then it'll be like a holiday weekend and they want and Zany, uh, Lucy will blast out. Like, if you want to come to the late show, hit yep. me up, that kind of stuff. But we're always welcome during the week. Mm -hmm. And they're a great club, so they actually have headliners yeah. through the week yeah and so as long as it's not sold out you can go hang out and uh that's what i nashville is great about it nashville you walk in on a monday and you see everybody in the comedy community yes. there hanging out whether they're on the show or not they're mm -hmm. there i go i went back to wilmington and it was a headliner show like i cherish those moments growing up like timmy and amy and cole have always been great about like come watch these headliners. i just want to be able to walk Learn. in the back yeah and I just, I, there was just a handful of comics in Wilmington that came out. And I'm like, I know all of y'all don't have shows tonight. Right. That's what I tell people. It's like, you got to go to the shows you're not on. Go to shows you're not on. That's like the best way to learn and to get on shows. You know, uh, I used to wrestle. I don't know if you know that. I, I was an independent <laughs> wrestler for a while. That's awesome. And I, uh, I would bring my gear. My, my gear was in my trunk. You never know who's going to know show. That's how I got Dude, on shows. I got so many shows at Dead Crow from Timmy doing the first show, yep. and then him just wanting to go home and be like, "You're hosting." Yeah. I'm like, All right. Hell yeah. I got to host New Year's for Rosebud Baker uh, years yeah. ago because yeah. Timmy was 
hammered. And I was hammered too. Yeah. And he looked at me. He's like, "You're hosting the second show." I was like, uh, "I'm wearing shorts." <laughs> I'm just like, "Okay, will do." Hell yeah. Uh, I got some. I got some uh, sillier questions I want to ask yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, you're a list guy. I am a list guy. Yes. So I want to do a Love couple a good of these top five. So. Uh, yeah, you do the top five online, right? And so it's uh, your top five, all of these different things. You run through them really quickly. I uh, I do these questions. I, I really like them. Um, it, your favorite candy bar, you can only have one candy bar for the rest of your life. Every other candy bar ceases to exist for you. You can only have one every time you go into a gas station yeah. to grab a candy bar. What is it? 100 grand. 100 grand. Yeah. Yeah? Always? Always. Always. The You'll never down. change any answer. Never. All right. I've just been my answer since I was probably like five. Really? Dude, I had one of those and it was like a game changer. Yeah. Like, it's like a Nestle Crunch Bar and a Twix put together. It's ah, great. that's a fair point. Mm. Yeah, amazing. 100 grand's a great Yeah, 100 grand. And I hate that you can't find them everywhere now. Like, yeah. I buy, like, three or four whenever I go in a gas station and see them. I'm like, oh, I never know when I'm going to get Two another one. five king size. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love this. So, 100 grand, no doubt. All right, good, good. Uh, same question, fast food restaurants. You only get one for the rest of your life. It's the only one you can go to. I know. I'll probably go Wendy's. Wendy's. Yeah. Okay. I'll come. I love their burgers. <laughs> All right. And I love their chicken nuggets. All right. And I think I could just live off that. So what's the order if you go to Wendy's? What, what are you ordering? I'll get a uh, Baconator mm-hmm. and then maybe like a, like a six-piece nugget on the side. What's the drink? Sweet tea. Mm-hmm. All day. <laughs> okay. Nectar okay. of the gods. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> a bag of chips. You want to get one bag of chips for the rest mm-hmm. of your life? I'll go barbecue. I'll go... Barbecue chips? I'll Certain go brand? The old school, before they did the Casey Masterpiece. Okay. Lay's old barbecue, old <laughs> mesquite barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. They had the... I can see the bag now. They yeah. had that bright orange bag. Yeah, yeah. Me and my grandma would crush a bag watching uh, MacGyver. At <laughs> <night>. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I think I'll go... Uh, I think I'll go... Uh, salt and vinegar chips. I, think I do like mind. salt and vinegar. Yeah. I just don't know if I could only eat salt. Yeah, and I feel that. Either. I think I could. Yeah. And I used to be, when I was younger, it was like a bag of wise salt and vinegar chips. But now, mm. man, these kettle cooked chips They're have so really good. changed the game. Man. I think I'm They're going so kettle good. kettle jalapeno. Kettle Ooh, jalapeno. That's okay, that's doing. a solid yeah. choice. Yeah, fancy. Bread. I like that with a good uh, sub. You know, yeah. Sub. Oh, yeah. Put yeah, the yeah. jalapeno chips on the sub. Yes. Mm, come on, man. What would be your What would be your candy bar? Oh man. Uh, I've had a really hard time answering this. <laughs> yeah. I uh, here recently, if I had to lock my answer in, I, I think I got to go Kit Kat. And I don't. Okay. I'm not super excited about that answer. Doesn't that tie in though? Take a break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I uh, I really love Twix. The salted caramel Twix is really kind of doing it for Ooh, me lately. You know, dark horse for me, mm. the Midnight Milky Way. We were oh, talking about that right. last night. That's your jam. Last night, yeah. yeah. I had a couple of those. Uh, he likes the mini candy bars. Yeah. We actually have some here, I'm sure. Those are perfect. Little, yeah. Yeah, he loves, he loves those. Because then you don't feel bad about eating 15 of them. I, well, I don't, <laughs> feel bad about eating 15, I don't feel bad about eating 15 regular size candy bars. Right? Fair. So Fair. I, I just think with the minis, what they've done is extensive research on the perfect amount of each <laughs> yeah. ingredient. I love the science behind this. Whenever yeah. you pop it in your mouth, you're getting the perfect amount of nugget, perfect amount of chocolate, perfect amount of everything yeah. in one bite. All right. That's, That's yeah, flawless I, mentality. Right? I, you right. know, he loves the mini Twix, but for me, I'm like, I'm a bulk guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. if something's good, <laughs> give me all of it. I mean, that's fair. By the time you eat a whole Twix, it's kind of melted a little bit on your finger. You know, yeah. so oh, God. A little want. <laughs> hey, Eric's like, I don't care. I was, I was uh, looking at my fingers in bed last night. Yeah. I'm a big Reese's fan, too. Man. I love Reese's, I love man. I got to do Frozen with Reese's. That can't Same. be room Yeah, pop them in the fridge anymore. every yeah. time. You know? Uh, you know, I think that's a little overrated. I got to be honest. I guess, like, I'm the, with you there. That's why they got to be frozen for me. Really? I well, got to do the, that's that what crunch. I'm I like the consistency a little bit better when they're frozen. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. There is something about that uh, that peanut butter. It's like, you know, chalky. you walk into that warm gas station and you're like, this is going to be half melted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of chalky. And too, then you got to lick it like. off the, the paper. The and you the hope it comes off the paper yeah, in the yeah, first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of peanut butter, uh, one of my favorite questions. Nobody makes a peanut butter and jelly. No two people make a peanut butter and jelly the same. It's like a fingerprint, right? So um, I'll walk you through this. You got everything you need. Uh, yeah. It's a perfect peanut butter and jelly. You walk into your kitchen, and you, get, you got bread for a peanut butter and jelly. What kind of bread is it? 
Dude, to be honest with you, I like just plain old white bread. Plain old white bread. Yeah. Fantastic. Specific brand? No? Uh, I like old fashioned. All right. All right. Old fashioned. So you get an uh, old fashioned white bread? You got uh, you got peanut butter, you got jelly. What kind of peanut butter you grab? Jiffs. Jiff, smooth. Jiff guy. Smooth. 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 Uh, yeah. Jelly? Grape. Grape jelly. Yeah. All right. Smuckers. Smuckers. There Smuckers. you go. Fantastic. You reach into the uh, you reach into the drawer to grab a uh, uh, what are you grabbing in there? I actually use a knife for the peanut butter and a spoon for the jelly. A sophisticated knife. Yeah, right. right. So you, uh, you got two pieces of bread. You got your Jif and your Smuckers there. What goes on the bread first? Both sides peanut butter. Both sides peanut butter with the knife. Yep. All right. Uh, you, you, you peanut butter on both sides. And then uh, when you get into the jelly, you take that spoon. Do you just grab a scoop? Do you? I, I do the swirl first. You got to break swirl. it up. Got to mix it, it up, helps right? helps with the spreadability. It does help you know? with the spreadability. Yeah. Because I, I, I hate biting into the peanut butter and jelly, and you get that big glob of jelly. It yes. ruins the bite. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, and then so peanut butter on both sides, jelly on one or both? One. One. Yeah, and then yeah. you put it together, and then you're cutting that thing, or you're eating it whole? I'm just shoving it in my face. Just shoving it in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so four far, bites. You know? the, uh, that's the closest to how I make a peanut butter okay. jelly that I've had so, so far. the right way is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I am a I am a cut guy just because uh, you know I do it's one of the only good triangle. Good thing. Yeah, yeah, I do a I triangle. Do you know what I, mean? I, I love it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not only a triangle guy. I'll go either way depending on my mood. You know what I mean? Okay. But it is one of the things. So that, you're like an artist. You know, you yeah. let, let it talk. What do I feel like? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I let the sandwich talk to me. Yeah. We had some fucking weirdo in here. I don't remember who it was. A shoe. It was uh, James. It was James Hodge, I believe. So he cut it. Yeah, that's right. And it's got a wedge. This fucking guy. He cuts it. Down the middle, but then diagonally. So he well. likes little fours. He likes yeah. little fours, yeah. And so he's like, you get two triangles, you get two squares. I'm like, I don't like anything about you, man. <laughs> but yeah, everybody has made peanut butter and jelly's different. I think so. you said, dude, you just cut your sandwich into a swastika, dude. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the symbol for peace. Um, oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you, Hitler. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, uh, if you could have, you have to have one of these. You got to take one. It's. Uh, would you rather have foot ears or ear feet? I didn't know this question was going to get so much. Uh, uh, you asked you know, that. Traffic. I'm, I'm serving your question. <laughs> I'm going to go ear feet because you could probably hide them a little you bit. You can hide them a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I don't know having big old feet on the side of your head how well that works <laughs> yeah. for I you. I don't know. Would they be full size feet or ear sized feet? I think they'd be ear sized feet. Okay. It's so weird though. Yeah. Right? <sighs> I mean, I'm in the South. And you can wiggle the toes, too. Tattooed and long-haired anyway, you know yeah, yeah. I mean? I don't need more reason for <laughs> old ladies to stare at me. Uh, yeah. Are those feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That boy got that. fungus on his ears. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Right, it like, kind of would get mistaken for like cauliflower ear, and then people yeah, no one was a badass. Yeah, no yeah, one wants to mess with you. Okay. Like, right. man, that dude's ears are so cauliflowered; he's got toes. <laughs> or they just see this Macho Man tattoo and be like, "This guy's a fucking bad motherfucker." <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing, man. Is I feel bad because I would. I'm not. I don't consider myself a fighter at all. Yeah. You know. You know. We've all had our scraps in sure. our early years, but I think the cauliflower ear looks so dumb. Yeah. Like, just cover your ears when you're wrestling, man. Like, it's not that hard. Mm. Let's talk about wrestling. Okay. Maybe we're getting this tattoo. Uh, you're wearing the NWO shirt. I fucking love it. Yeah. Uh, you, you said you, you, you've been going back and watching old stuff. Um, how old were you when you started watching wrestling? As long as I can remember, man. Yeah. Like, Pretty young. Who yeah. turned you on to it? How'd you find it? Uh, to be honest with you, I, no one in my family understood it. Really? So I think it was one of those things that used to come on on Saturday, Saturday mornings. Saturday mornings, yeah. And I think that Super got stylish. me hooked. Because I think, you know, I turned on one day and Hogan's doing his take your vitamins, say your prayers. That's right. What you going to do when these 22-inch pythons come for you, you know? 24-inch. Yeah. Oh, not my, sure, I'm but... sorry. My bad. <laughs> uh, and I was just like, and t in a weird way, I feel like old wrestling promos is kind of what got me into comedy. Mm. You know, where I was like, I want to have a microphone and be able to say and people listen to what I'm saying. Like, yeah. this is amazing. So I was just enthralled with the promos that they used to cut back then, man. Like, I remember Ultimate Warrior got me into it, Macho yeah. Man, Rowdy Roddy Piper. It's bigger than life yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, I, my mom got me an action figure. And then the next thing, you know, we f went to a garage sale and they had a ring for sale for yeah. your action figure. So I was like, well, let me get that. Yeah. And I just started this collection and before I know it, my mom said that, and I remember some of it, you know, but I was still pretty young. But every Monday night during the Monday Night Wars, I would sit in the living room 
and have both channels on the previous channel yep. and be able to just yep. flash back, back and, and forth. forth. And I'd have all my wrestlers out and I'd have my ring and I'd have pay-per-views. Mm-hmm. And I, my mom sent me a little notepad I had where I would keep the booking sheet. The booking <laughs> of who was champion, who won this. Yeah. And luckily the dates are on it. So like, wow, I was like, got oh, that? Yeah. so it's like 94, 95. So I was like nine or 10. You still have that? Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. She sent it, she, she found it and sent it to me probably like three years ago. Wow. And uh, my wrestlers are still in a closet somewhere in her house. You That's know? pretty dope. I, I, and you know they weren't the best quality, so like a leg would yeah. fall off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I would become a little surgeon. I'd yeah. put like a little rubber band around the leg, mm-hmm. wood glue it, keep it together. Yes, you know. Sir. But I had so many. Just the Monday Night Wars were amazing, dude. Like I was a big Razor Ramon fan. So then he just shows up on Monday Nitro. Yeah. I'm a kid. I don't understand business. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like, just saw that guy as Razor Ramon. And now he's on the other show. Yeah, so yeah, the NWO, quickly. like, I was hooked already. Is that your group forever, NWO? Is that? I mean, I like DX, too, Yeah. because I'm a huge Shawn, Shawn Michaels, Michaels fan. Guy, yeah. But NWO, like, they changed everything. Yeah. You know, I, and don't get me wrong, I don't like the later years. They hung right. on way too far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> way too long. Every, I feel like everybody in the, in the company kitchen. was in the NWO at some point. They were, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it yeah, got watered become, down. Yeah, if, if they would have kept, like, six people, like, once they got to uh, Macho Man. It wasn't exclusive or yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we get it. You're a big group. You got to be able to dominate, but... The way they let Sting, that storyline, one of the best storylines I've ever seen. Fall apart. You know, like, yeah. and you know wrestling nowadays, it's hard to get a storyline you really get behind. Because they just doing, abandon, they don't have the slow burn anymore. See, I feel like, they, I feel like that's changing. I it think, is, it's getting so way better. I'm watching, I'm watching current product, uh, and I really enjoy it. I, I think the stuff they're doing with the bloodline Same. right now. Three year long storyline. When and, did you ever hear about them? And com- what's there's no that end much. in sight. Like they're they're in the first act of this thing. For the first time in a long time I can tune into wrestling and truly not know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Amazing. So I was, I was a big NXT guy. Yes. Um, I still am. I yeah, love me watching too, it. yeah. I don't watch it as much right now as, as I was um, yeah. five, six years ago, seven, eight years ago, but it it sped by but uh you know watching bailey and sasha uh becky put on and, some bangers man yeah dude uh, like anytime charlotte and oscar get in the ring it's oscar man fireworks good day yeah it's so good i i love to see it getting served the women's division because when i was a kid like uh, uh sherry Mattel was i mean i love sherry Mattel. when you want to talk about uh H-K. king macho man yeah when he macho had sherry buyer sean she she uh, guided Shawn Michaels through his start of his singles career. You yeah. know, without her as his uh, valet, I don't feel like he gets the heat he yeah, gets. for you know, sure he like. doesn't. And then I was watching, uh, uh, you said you were uh, going back and watching old WCW, the interview with uh, Harlem Heat when she was with them, when uh, uh, Booker T calls Hulk Hogan the N-word. Just That's another machines. good, I watched that biography, Booker T's. Oh, yeah? Amazing. Fantastic, My man right? shouldn't have lived past like nine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love the fact that he's still going. Yeah, growing I mean, he up was, in a, he was in the ring uh, a year ago. Yeah, which is wild and wow. looked great doing a spinner Rooney. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But that's you know uh, the fact that now we get to see documentaries and shoot interviews about all these guys. And you kind of get to know their their process and their stories. It it makes sense to me why so many comedians really love wrestling because they really are kind of the same thing, right? Very I much mean, so. You travel, you do your shows, you entertain. Yeah, you in a weird way. Like we're not getting beat up every night, but we're still destroying our bodies, being yeah. in the car as long, sleeping right. in weird places. Anyway, emotionally getting beat yeah. up constantly, yeah. you know, and, and uh, emotional cauliflower. Yeah. 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 Emotional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, when you're you're only good if the crowd tells you you're good. You know, and that's the same with comedy, right? I mean. If you you could you could sit in your basement and practice guitar, and when you come out, you'd be a better guitar player. Yeah. You can sit in your basement and practice wrestling. Good luck. You can sit in your basement and practice comedy. Good luck. Good luck. You have to do it live to right. know what's what's good. Yeah. And when I hear uh, wrestlers talk about the energy from a crowd, I'm like, I get that. No doubt, man. But I mean, I don't get it on that level. No. Yeah. You I've know? never I've never been in Madison Square oh, yeah. Garden with seventy thousand people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Going I hope to kids. one day. Yeah, you know? right. uh, but no, I agree with you, man. I bet a lot of the bookers in the '80s <laughs> were pretty similar comedy and wrestling. You right? Know, like, yeah, yeah. You work for them, you don't work for me. Right. There was a lot of that as well, too. And I think that's a. I mean, how fantastic is it that the internet exists now, and um, people can have? I think that's one of the reasons I think 
wrestling is so good, and it's one of the reasons I think that comedy is as healthy as it's ever been, is because the internet exists. Same with sports in general, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, I think if you go back 15 years, uh, the reason athletes were so vilified is because we were only really ever getting the owner's perspective through the news sources, like, oh, these greedy players, da da da. Meanwhile, it's, it's greedy fucking owners and uh, these incredibly skilled human beings who didn't get to tell their stories and now they have a direct contact with the fan bases. And so, uh, same with wrestling, right? We're getting to hear all these old stories and all of it makes sense now when you, when you start looking at the Monday Night Wars and people going from one company to the other. It's like, uh, yeah, I needed money. You know what I mean? The no, amount of money that, that WCW was thrown at those guys back in the day. That Ted Turner money. Yeah. Like, I, rem- <laughs> I think I heard Scott Hall said uh, when he was asked to come over first, they were going to give him $2 million a year. He was going to sign a three-year deal for $6 million. Yeah. And he went back to Vince, and Vince was like, I can give you a 10-year contract for $15 million. Mm. And he was like, "What? Yeah, it's not the same. No. Yeah, like I'm gonna go over there." And he's <laughs> yeah. like, "And also, I'm sure Scott Hall had that mentality. Like, I'm not gonna be here in ten years, man." Right. And you know, uh, they were working less dates over in WCW, and the contracts were guaranteed. All yeah. that stuff. Yeah. A lot really of those cool. guys got to sit when the, when WCW folded. They got to just sit at home for three years. Collect those contracts. Yeah. They weren't. That's what up. ruined Lex Luger and Miss Elizabeth. Yeah. 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 Do yeah. you have a group of people that you? Still talk wrestling with? Yeah, we, in a group chat. We have this uh, Instagram group chat called uh, uh, Brestlemania. What is I it? I don't know why someone named it that. Brestlemania. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Beastlemania. I don't know what they call it, but yeah, yeah. when we see funny wrestling memes, we like okay. throw it in there and stuff like that. Like I saw uh, yesterday, Little Uzi Vert dropped a new song and Shinsuke it's Nakamura, Nakamura sampled. So I mm-hmm. put that in the group. You know, like see that's how we keep up with it it's mainly just funny i follow a bunch of uh 90s wrestling accounts yeah and they'll put out funny memes and stuff like that the 90s stuff so for me uh whenever i'm whenever i'm a mess in my head and i'm i gotta put myself i gotta put myself in a place where everything is familiar it's old wrestling yeah i uh i watch old pay-per-views like you know um with money in the bank right here I would go back and I just watch all the money in banks. You know what I mean? I would just every time I'm home, if I get in bed, boom, money in the banks on. Royal Rumble season is. I love one of my Royal favorites. Rumble. Love what's your, what's my your, favorite. Uh, favorite 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 yeah. Royal Rumble? Yeah, me too. I love the old school Survivor Series. Man, where it would I was be just about random to teams put together. Yeah, five I on five. I miss that. Yeah. Because then you'd be like, especially as a kid, you'd be like, "Oh, my favorite wrestlers are on the same team." Yeah. So, like I remember that one year. I think it was uh, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man. Hulk Hogan and the Big Boss Man were on a team. I was like, "This is great, unbelievable!" Yeah, yeah. I uh, the only the only one that uh, looked so strange to me when I was young was whenever they would do the tag team uh, Survivor Series, and it was five teams on five teams, and it was just the whole ring, like you know what I mean? It's twenty people on the ring, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And then so at one corner, two opposite tag teams are standing right next to each other. I'm like, just hit them. Hit him. <laughs> Hit him. Hit him. Get him. Yeah. I love back in the day they were so enthralled with keeping the storyline that, like, if you were rivals, you couldn't travel together. I mean, that's what cost uh, Hexaw Jim Duggan the championship. He was about to win the championship. He got pulled over in the car with Iron Sheik, rest in peace. And uh, they got into the newspaper, and they, they were like, you can't, now you can't be the champion. We, all- we were just listening. We've been listening to uh, <laughs> Behind the Bastards. Okay. Podcast, no, never heard. and uh, they did a five part on Vince McMahon. Really? Yeah, it's it's a it's, long story. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> they get and they get into it like really? early years, how his dad screwed him up, like all kinds of stuff. Wow. Man, it's great how he covered up all the steroids in the nineties. Yeah, like, how I mean, he thought court case. how he thought Hogan was gonna bury him and he didn't. You know, like it's it's good. Hogan uh, could have sent that man to jail for a long time. And he did didn't. he not? Did he not turn on him? I thought he turned on him. No. He did just enough. Ah, uh, right. We, to not perjure himself, but then they were like, "Man, we don't really." Isn't have it interesting anymore. that there was all of these instances of uh, Vince McMahon falling out with people, but then they always came back. He and he always welcomed them I back. I think in. he's great about playing that mom guilt. Mm. You know, like <laughs> we'd really love to see. <laughs> <you>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> It'd be a shame if you, you know, you what called it, us every about now it is, You sit there and you say, you know, he, he's welcoming back, mm -hmm. okay? Is it still all a work? Like yeah. the court shit, everything. They're just like, yeah, we're gonna go into this court shit, man. We are getting headlines mm. like a yeah. motherfucker. Well, I think and he's so, a firm believer, and there's no such thing as bad yeah, press. Yeah, and you know? you know, so like we're sitting there and we're watching this court, and it's like, man, this is court. This is some serious yeah. shit. And the whole time they're just like, I, I, well, I'm positive he was worried about prison and stuff. I think but also, that's the only time we ever saw him worried was those steroid cases. Yeah, I feel yeah. like because they had a good case against him because they had his doctor. When you when you when you uh, uh, when you wear a T-shirt and you have a wrestling tattoo, uh, do you have any when you when people interact with you? Uh, do you still get any people who are kind of uh, kind of shaming you with it? Yeah, you know, but like I I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you get your entertainment, right. so I get my entertainment. Like. I you know feel it's like, fake, right? It's like, yeah. yeah, you watch Succession, you know that's not real, right? Right. Yeah. Like, Game of Thrones, you know there's no yeah. dragons. I'm sorry my scripted show comes with a little more violence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see Logan scripted Roy violence. in WWE, though. Yeah. 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 But, like, I, I, I've, I'm a firm believer, man, as long as you're not hurting anybody. Right. Enjoy what you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I feel like I put that vibe out that people want to shame me, and they're like, ah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm not going to get anywhere with this guy. I, I, got uh, a car, you got to say, I got a car full of bluey stickers. Yeah. I love that kids show. Oh, yeah. I don't have any kids. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah. I like what I like. Hell That's yeah. the great thing about being old, man. Uh, like, you get past all I that I don't bullshit? have to be cool anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't care if you think what I do is lame. It makes me happy. Wish I'd have gotten to that uh, earlier in my life. Same, man. I, like I listened to so many that. crappy music that I, so much crappy music that I didn't want to listen to <laughs> just because it was cool. Right, yeah. Right. Now all my friends are like, you got to check out this indie band. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Taylor Swift all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Boudreaux, you a Swifty? Yeah, man. I think she's uh I think she's super talented. Yeah, yeah, I love I love, yeah, she I'm is. a big Taylor Swift fan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she well, is, I, I man. Don't, I mean yeah. you, you get that girl a breakup and I mean she's Adele. <laughs> yeah, Every, three three so new nobody albums. Nobody gives Taylor Swift shit. Nobody gives Adele shit. Yeah. They do the same thing. I love that people gave Adele shit for losing weight. Yeah, what's up with yeah. that, too? Oh, I'm sorry she wanted to be healthier and yeah. do better her life. I got a, uh, you know, I, I lost some weight, uh, but then I recently I found it again. But when I lost <laughs> Isn't it, it funny how you can pick it right back up? <laughs> yeah, pick it right back up. <laughs> it's like riding a bike. Uh, I'm uh, doing the best I ever did uh, <laughs> as far as picking up weight. But uh, I lost a bunch of weight at one point. And a bunch of people came up to me and were like, oh, I preferred it when you were fat. Or, but, and I was like, dude, what's wrong with you? Dude, Post Malone, they thought Post Malone was dying. Yeah, in an attic. Like, it, He's like, no, I just like, took oh, better man. care of myself. You did that Why with Jonah Hill. He's like, too. I have a daughter. Yeah, I'm trying to be around more. Why now. do we give a fuck? Why, do why are people... we in so many? Why are we in other people's business? Why are we in other people's business? Why? I remember. And why, when we are in other people's business, do we have to be so fucking negative all the time? I was talking to a buddy of mine, and he's a history professor, also a comedian. And I was like, dude, how – I'm struggling sometimes with finding the funny in every day because, you know, because everything's so serious. And we talked about it for a while, and we got down to the root of it is everyone's miserable. And all we do nowadays is complain about how miserable we are and then wonder why people are miserable around us. Right. Like, well, you put out that misery, you're going to get it right back. And that's the thing I had to realize is – when you know you're not getting shows and you're complaining about stuff like you just put out such negative energy around you that that welcomes other comics to bitch about their shows mm. so the next thing you know three hours has gone by and y'all are just sitting there miserable nobody did anything productive you're just like oh i'm yeah. i'm just trying to get completely out of that mindset lou Morganta in wilmington said Love the lou. best thing he ever said to me when i first moved to wilmington and it's always stuck with me. And I remind him about it every time I see him. He said, don't get bitter, get better. Mm. And I was like, huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, that mm. makes way more sense. Yeah, Lou's a, uh, Lou's a, a beautiful dude. Yeah. You, you got lucky getting a Wilmington and finding all of those cool yeah, people. Yeah, Lou, there. Sean, yeah. Uh, Bishop. Yep. Uh, just, they really took me under their wing. They're like, another fat guy? Yeah, let's go. Come on. <laughs> I'm not edgy. I don't want you to leave being like, ah, he had me to that one point. You know? Like, I had a change. Well, I'm not the person to change somebody's opinion. Right. Like, man, I never got... in the history of If anyone. you're coming to a comedy show to get, uh, to get informed, 
I have the wrong ticket. Idiot, to buy. Man. <laughs> I can inform you about my butthole. That's probably about yeah, the yeah. most. Uh, I had some strong feelings about that man's butthole, but you know he yeah. swayed me near the end. Yeah, yeah. I started having an approach probably in 2016 when uh, just I acted like my mom was in the audience to every show. Ah. And I acted like my mom was in the audience and I had to hang out with her after the show. Dude. So I didn't want to ever say anything that would make me feel awkward or like, I never want to have to, see, I love greeting people after the show. Like I love at least just standing by the door and being like, thanks for coming out. Yes, Good sir. to see you. You know, see my face one more time. Maybe they'll go follow me. You know, mm -hmm. maybe they'll, and I never want someone to not be able to make eye contact with me yes, out the door. You yeah. know, like, I'll, if anything, it's because they interrupted me and I called them out on it. And they're like, yeah. sorry. You know, like, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> but I never want someone to be like, and I had this one girl come up to me in Wilmington. And she was like, she randomly came with some friends that night. And it was just uh, it was comedy bingo. Okay. And I got to do a 20-minute set because yeah. Bishop was great about giving you time yeah, to work yeah. some stuff out. And it was a really good 20 minute set. Like it was one of those, the beginning of where like this certain 20 minutes was really starting to come together mm -hmm. and it felt great. Nice. And I got off the stage and this girl came up to me at, in Wilmington and she was like, I had given up hope on comedy. She's like, I'd been to so many bad comedy shows where it just made me feel terrible. Yeah. And she's like, in a weird way, you've restored comedy for me. And I was like, wow. blown away. I was like, yeah. oh, wow, thank you for giving me that compliment mm -hmm. like that's the best you could ever like yeah because it always feels nice when someone's like great set you were very funny yeah. but someone to say i restored con like yeah i've never I was, heard i that. almost was like i'm not worthy <laughs> but it was great you know because i just, and all i did was not offend her right mm. right i wasn't exceptionally funny you know but i just sure. didn't offend her yeah you know like and it i just feel like Such that a goes a long way over. you didn't hit the buzzwords yeah that, like, everybody's i didn't make her yeah. feel bad about being who she was it's you know, uh, I don't know I've talked to Seth about this. There there are some jokes that are they call it low hanging fruit because it's there for everybody and it's really easily accessible and you can get a giggle by saying a word, but I mean unless you need to say that word, why should you? You know? Uh, yeah. That's why I really have just cleaned up everything, man. Like I'm pretty like ninety percent clean now. Nice. Just because I don't want anyone to feel weird. You know, like that. Because you, you know to, how it feels to feel weird. Exactly. <laughs> well, the thing is, is too, isn't it more of a challenge? Like Absolutely. to me, it's it's more clean, of a challenge. You, you gotta you know? gotta go outside of the box that everybody else is standing in, mm. and look at it from the different angle. You know, all these different things, man. And, and uh, you know, like I don't know, I I struggle to write. Like I, yeah. I just do, yeah. you know. And so, uh, whenever I really hit on that thing that I'm completely away from everybody else that I heard tonight. You know, because it's like the Chick-fil-A joke. Oh, great, Chick-fil-A joke. Mention the sauce, mention the, my pleasure to serve you, the, the dating uh, app joke, you know, like, oh, this one, you I, know? I cringe every time a comic's on stage, but who's on Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, no. Hey, how much time I got? Yeah, yeah. You know, like that. Uh, like, what else? What, what else do you want to talk <laughs> yeah. about? What I'm going to talk I'm about I'm going to get, let me get out of here on this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to end on this. I'm going to end on this and I'll get out of you here. You know, but I mean. What's that, sir? I said, I'm going to end on this and I'll get out of here. Yeah. 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 That's, you know, that's my time. But I mean, to me, it's more of a challenge to, to sit there and, uh, you know, look at those things from a different angle to where you're not offending those people. And, and, and uh, the inadvertent offense sure you know you can kind of be like ah well that wasn't my intention you know yeah, ah, oops. yeah I, that's the thing man is if you get offended by me you shouldn't be at a comedy yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so whenever you're recording an album how do you how do you know it's the right time to record the album i hit the 10 year mark and i was like i feel good about the jokes i've come up with these past 10 years so i really wanted to do uh this has been the last decade kind of thing you know, like this was, or, or this is the first decade of my career. Uh -huh. I really wanted to like, and to be honest with you, man, I was getting pretty tired of those jokes. <laughs> so so it was like, a, I wanted an, to lay them down and be done. Them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you know, until you have another forty-five minutes of material, sometimes you got to dip. You're back revisiting. Into, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't feel even really know what it's like to have forty-five minutes of material. I, got <laughs> I, I feel real strong about the twenty that I've written since then. But yeah, I got to when I do longer sets, I still have to dip into some of the album. But there's definitely jokes that I did on the album, and I was like, I'll never tell these jokes again. And it's been fun. It, do you think it's just because you've grown into like this new? 
kind of outlook and it, you know the experiences that have helped you to grow for sure is, is it Some those way. things to where it's kind of like ah, i just don't want to do this anymore yeah they just didn't fit anymore you know what i mean like i'm really trying to we were talking about low-hanging fruit i'm really trying to get away from like fat jokes and things like that you know because uh -huh. like, I, just, I just feel like there's more just context just yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more layers than that you know what i mean like i don't Plus, I'm trying not to be fat in a couple of years. Yeah. So oh, can't sure. really have a bunch of fat jokes if you're not fat anymore. <laughs> but I just, I, I really loved those jokes, and they served a purpose in that time, but I really wanted to get them out there. And the good thing about it is having an album out there has just opened up a lot of opportunities anyway. Like, once you prove to people, like, oh, you can do this, they're more willing to let you come do their show, do longer sets. Like, as soon as I mentioned to a booker or somebody, I, I have an album out there, I don't have the questions anymore of like, can you do the time? Can you like, they know. Oh, like, really? Yeah. So it's a validation. So I, got, I got, yeah, I got like the, the Certificate. it's like the card, you know, yeah. like, like I can do this. So it's nice. It did, you know, I've self-produced it. It did 30. It's still up and running, but I've done 32,000 on YouTube. Wow. Nice, wow man. That's crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, it's awesome. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with yeah, it. Yeah, We'll put a link in it in this episode. No, thank too, you, man. Yeah. yeah uh, <clears throat> so it's been great, man. Best thing I ever did. Uh, and the best thing I ever did was self-produce it too. Like, cause I got a lot of friends that are on labels that are tied up in all the legal stuff with Spotify uh -huh. and their yeah. album's not out anywhere anymore. So I'm very happy. I have creative control over it. I can put it wherever I want to. I released it myself through DistroKid. So it's on uh -huh. all the stores, it's in Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. Yeah. So you, you went back to school. So was the album after school or was that before? during man so during the, the okay. beginning of 2022 like an idiot i was doing my last semester of school about to graduate and i took on the challenge of recording an album that february wow i i uh, graduated in may i recorded the album in february and put the album out in august and wow. I, I did the final edits and all the artwork for everything and uh all the promo material, I did all of it. Why'd you go back to school? Uh, COVID, you know, sitting, yeah. sitting around, I had some time and I always wanted to be a college graduate. Cause no, like my mom graduated community college, but she was the first one in my family to yeah. graduate anything. So I was like, let me, let me go, at least get back. this degree. Yeah. And you know, the name of the game now is clips and videos. So I went back for video editing, graphic design, nice. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, stuff you got to use as a comic anyway so yeah. like let me get the certificate so maybe i can get some extra work and that's what i was kind of doing before i even tried to do comedy it was like i was doing video stuff i was like this is fun and i was like oh this is a skill that it's a helps in, a lot so in, it's yeah. invaluable you know it's that's how i got here <laughs> yeah exactly so i mean it's something that everyone's got to in this field everyone's got to have self-promotion so yeah. i just took it to the next level and learned a lot of a lot of great stuff so getting the degree um you know, of course, you're using it with the developing the, the posters and all, but you also said you like to paint. Are you painting yeah. currently? Yeah, I just I got a car full of art supplies. My, my birthday's in uh, August, but I'm not going to see my mom. Uh, I'm going to see my mom in July, but I'm flying in, so I'm not going to have. She bought me like a bunch of uh, um, canvases. She bought me a crap ton of paint. So I've, I've really gotten into oil painting this last year. Yeah, I was going to ask. I'm having a blast, man. What kind of... Uh... Good old Bob Ross, man. I've been <laughs> watching Bob Ross episodes and kind of like following yeah. along with him. And I've, I've turned out some pretty yeah. good paintings. You know, like, awesome. it felt great. I got some pictures I'll show you. Yeah, after. I love yeah. But uh, it's one of those things that like you, you pigeonhole yourself. You're like, I can't do that. What, why am I going to try? That's just other people's voices. Right. Well, I was told from a very young age by a bunch of teachers, there's no money in art. Like, cause I love drawing. Yeah. My favorite thing growing up was I would take baseball and basketball football teams and redesign their logos yeah. and jerseys. Like I love doing that. I was like, right. it should look like this. Um, but I was told early on, like, don't do art, go to college, get some degree. You can't make money in art. So Where I suppressed that for so long. Right. And then like, you know, when things shut down, I started doodling again. I started drawing and my wife was super supportive. She's like, this is good. She's like, go back to school for art. So that's why we did the graphic design, the video editing. And uh, then I was just sitting at home, you know, with doing comedy full time. You got a little bit of time on your hands yeah, a little bit. You know, <laughs> in between runs. I mean, that's, and one stuff. Of the, that's one of the perks. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I, I was watching Bob Ross almost as like a meditation, mm -hmm. as like a like a centering myself, kind of relaxing for the day. And then I was just watching his techniques and I was like, 
I think I can do this. And I had one of those random art uh, kits, mm-hmm. you know, you get for like Christmas one year and you don't really think yeah. about it. <laughs> and I looked and I was like, it's got quite a bit of oil paint in here. And so I went to the store and I got a canvas and I got uh, some brushes that I, that I saw that he used and tried it and my first painting turned out so good really that like so much better than you could have thought right like as you're doing it you're like is this coming together (laughs) (laughs) so then i painted you know four more and i've just been having a blast with it man it's very relaxing good for you yes it's it's you shut off it's the the only thing in my life where i truly can put my phone down Mm. and not even think about picking it up Mm. once unless it rings or goes off or something but i truly for that you know, hour, hour and a half, I'm painting. I just hang out with myself and my thoughts, and just, it's great. Do you consider yourself an artist? Yeah. Do you consider yourself an artist before the paint? Yeah. I consider myself like a multimedia artist. Yeah. You know? um, as far as being a performer? Yeah. Uh, I think you, it's an art. It is, right? Because especially now, like, I've seen so many, so much bad comedy. Sure. You know, like good comedy. I truly, truly believe not to sound like pretentious no. from a comedic, but like. But I mean, but that's that's why I get to that question. Yeah. Is yeah. because, I think when we started, right? It's the things you're supposed to do, are fucking, be a, a lunatic piece of shit who goes on stage and offends everybody and just da, 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 yeah. I'm a I'm a fucking yeah. comedian. I, I, my balls on stage. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, uh, and then when you, I think if you'd asked me eight years ago. Are you an artist? Absolutely not. Right. And then here in the last four or five years, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you, know, you found the art form of it. Yeah. You found what works. The right. nuance. Because I had that mentality, not of just being a savage on stage, but I had to be the party boy. Yes. You know, so I, I felt I lived the gimmick mm-hmm. in I'm going to drink heavily with you after the show. Yep. You know, like buy me a beer and you got me for 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, like that mentality. Yeah. Whew, that, like you said, I don't think that was an art form. No. But, uh, yeah, I think truly good comedy isn't, because it's hard. So difficult. You know, we have thousands of comics. You know, maybe a few hundred do it right. Yeah, and how many names do people know? Just a couple. Uh, it's one of the things I used to say, so you can get into the, the, the question I, I like to ask comics is, like, do you consider yourself an artist? And I think for so long it was a no across the board and because there was some shame. Uh, yeah, with it. Like, we're just a clown. Yeah. You know, we're a jester. But it's, you know, you know I, I, I know I know it's difficult and I know it's an art form because if it wasn't difficult, it feels so good when it goes well that if it wasn't difficult, everyone would do it. Right. Because it feels so Because everyone tries good. to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, man. You can sit in the basement and practice painting and come out a better painter, but you can't with comedy. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you have to do it in front of people. Isn't it crazy? You so you could, you could make a bad painting at home and then never show anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do bad comedy, people are seeing it. Oh, you don't, no doubt if I did that oil <laughs> painting and it didn't come out well, I wouldn't yeah. bring it up to yeah, anyone. Yeah, you wouldn't tell me you had like, pictures. Like, do you paint? Mm-mm. No, I, try, I, I, I made a couple of paintings that were really bad. Want to see some pictures? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you already told me they're bad. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really, the, the whole thing's pretty interesting. And, you know, it's, but then the only people who really talk about how difficult it is are the people that do it. So then it becomes like self-referential. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, uh, I'm telling you how, how difficult the thing I do is. Well, shut the fuck up. But, I, it, you know. I love those just confident people mm. that are like, yeah, I'm going to knock this out of the park. And they get up their first open mic. And the first, the first thing they say is, oh. These lights are bright. Oh, yeah. this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> like, yeah. 30 I, uh, seconds in. How much time I got left? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a documentary on HBO. I think it was called Talking Funny. It was uh, like I've seen that. Louis C.K., Chris Rock, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry Seinfeld maybe, and um, uh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, yeah. And so at the time, I was not a Ricky Gervais fan. I have since changed my opinion on that. But at that point for me, I knew those other guys had all suffered through comedy. Ricky Gervais was a writer and had a show and then started doing comedy. So him telling me how to do comedy made no sense to me. Yeah, yeah. It's like he did it backwards. I'm not starting in stadiums. Yeah. I had listen, yeah. if I need to figure out how to fly private, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll look you up and right, you can tell right, me how right. to do that. Yeah. But the suffering is a thing you have to like earn, you know, you have to go do those 
those bad gigs first. So, I, I, could you imagine being one of those YouTube stars that just walked into headlining sets? I don't begrudge them. No, I'm, do what you do. Like do what you do. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've opened for quite a few of them, yeah. and I got no problem with it. Yeah. You know, I opened for a famous actor that was two years in, really? and when I was at the 10-year mark, and yeah, I was yeah. just like, okay. But, you I know, had, like, kudos for you. Like, that's the whole thing. Like, if comedy was easy, anyone would do it. Yeah. That's my whole viewpoint of being famous. Mm. Like, okay, well, if you're that upset about not being famous, go get famous. Go be yeah. famous. Yeah. Like I love these comics that are like, I ain't opening for no YouTuber. I'm like, yeah, yeah. if the club pays you, yeah. why not? And you know And they have a they usually do sold out in, shows. You walk in and you say, uh, thank you for the crowd. Exactly. Thank you for bringing Turn their fans you into your fans. Yeah, steal a couple fans. Yeah, that's it. All the all the great comics that I op uh, opened for, worked with, traveled with, uh, all said the same stuff and that was steal a couple of my fans tonight. Yeah. You know, uh, like, you know, if they brought two hundred people out See if you can get five or six of those people to, to really love you, you know, because that's how you build your fan base. And it's the best thing I, you can hear after a show at our level is I had no idea who you were. Yes. But you got a fan. Yeah. Like, love it. That's all that I That support is so fantastic, yeah. man. It looks so fucking crazy good. Dude, dude, that is amazing. Is that done? That's it. Yeah, we're finished. Oh, that's fantastic. Dude, dude you crushed that. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, I did want to say real quick, man, yeah. I, I've watched some of your, your stuff here, but uh, Tom Simmons talking yeah. about getting hit by a car. Oh, yeah. I was on that show with him. Oh, oh no wow. shit. I got to see, the Crown Theater. I got to see him do 20 minutes after getting hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> I opened for him on that show. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was walking from my show at the uh, – I had opened for Eddie Pepitone at the Star Theater. Oh, yeah. And so he only had a half mile to walk. Yeah. And he, got, he said he went in the walk, and a car turned right yeah. into him. Like, wow. I, 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 got, I, I saw y'all tell that story. I was like, I saw that live. Okay. I didn't see him get hit by the car. Yeah, but I yeah, saw yeah. Thing. You Me, were in right. the car. What's yeah. that? I said you were in the car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was trying to find parking. <laughs> <laughs> who, who hit you with the car? I did it for the rock. <laughs> I gave him a great story. <laughs> That's a deep cut. Yeah. Drew, man, dude. Thank you so much, man. Absolutely amazing. Amazing, man yeah. you crush this ah i'm so happy about it. i'm glad we went color yeah oh so yeah good. me too man i, I was hoping you were gonna say that so and good. uh yeah, oh, yeah i'm just i'm i'm ecstatic uh, yeah i do really appreciate you oh, you know coming course, on the show man, man. I, I i appreciate your awesome. artwork yeah the, uh, when we were you know every time we wrap one of these we at the end we have a little bit of a meeting and we talk about who who we want as guests and things like that and he threw out a bunch of names, and your name was one of them. And I was like, I fucking know Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then when I saw you in town, it just really worked out. I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm so really glad happy these dates worked out. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah, fantastic dude. to see you yeah. and catch Good, up, man. Of I miss course, you. man. Yeah. I'm so proud of you, dude. And Thank everything you. that you're Same, doing dude. out there is. Dude, I love y'all doing big things here, man. Yeah, trying, you know. Yeah, 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 keep going. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you. I love you. I'm proud of you, dude. Love you too, bud. Thank you, guys. Yeah, dude. Appreciate y'all. Hell yeah. All right.